Hi folks, welcome back to the B29 restoration project. We're gonna continue to get the horizontal stabilizers, make those removable. The last video showed getting all of the tube sockets and the tubes and everything and, and the ribs and all that for the horizontal stabilizer stubs installed. Current video, this one's gonna focus more on prepping the horizontal stabilizers for installation of the outboard tube support rib and getting the boreholes board for the tube sockets just like we did on the stubs really it's going to be a little bit of the same slight differences in this instance we've got one stabilizer that we're going to reuse and another one that we're building basically from from new so things are kind of going to go back and forth hand in hand uh, one thing i did before starting this video let me get the camera oriented here is I took both horizontal stabilizers into the bandsaw I trimmed a quarter of an inch off of the inboard face this is to account for that quarter inch plywood rib we're gonna put here and then I sanded them with the permagrit or a sanding block just to, to get them pointer and then I did the same thing here on the foam on the new foam core as well uh, I also went ahead and trimmed the excess of the shuck, as they call it, which is the big excess parts of the foam block that the core is actually cut from. We'll be using this quite often for both this this stab and the other one. Uh, luckily, the airfoils on this airplane are all symmetrical because it was basically built using extra 300 stuff, but in the shape of a B-29. So because it's airflow symmetrical, we can use this shuck for the other horizontal stabilizer as well. Another thing I did in preparation of this other horizontal stab is, like I said, we're putting a rib here on the very far end of the tubes to support those. They give those some structure and to tie in that rib to both the trailing edge and then the soon to be leading edge. So here on the stab that we're put that we're reusing, I went ahead and just dug a quarter inch slot, the full depth of this of the horizontal stabilizer. This does create a little bit of a structural issue because we have now cut the skins, which the skins are one of the things that provides quite a bit of the structural integrity for a foam core airplane. And since I've done that and we've also we're going to go to standard size servos instead of these large quarter scale ones we're going to end up removing all of the skin on the bottom here and we're going to just splice in some new ones like we've done many times on the on the airplane so far and we have quite a bit more to do <coughs> excuse me so before I get too far into cutting the slot on this stab core I don't want to cut it yet because if I do it's going to make this end really floppy and it's not going to be very structurally sound enough to where I can get the bork for the tube socket put in. Uh, another thing I did while I was <coughs> excuse me off camera is I took the plywood bur uh, the plywood rib blanks for the actual horizontal stabs and I matched the sanded those to the horizontal stabilizer stub airfoil shape so i'm going to pull one of these off for now and this will be the left side which is this one this is the bottom and this is the rib that we will use for that <clears throat> and i'm not going for a perfection here i'm gonna more or less just eyeball it where it needs to be that way we have room to maneuver this around up and down forward and backward because we're gonna the bores for this are going to be a little bit oversized if i had a oh if i had a uh <clears throat> excuse me a one inch tube i would probably use that one inch tube to bore the hole instead of the three quarter inch one that's the size of the actual tube in the socket that way it just gives you some some maneuver space for where you're going to put it so what i did there is i just made a mark three quarter of an inch back from the leading edge here and that's gonna basically <clears throat> excuse me 
that's going to basically tell us where the leading edge of this rib needs to be. So now I'm going to do that exact same process of using the aluminum tube with the with a level tape to it. And I'm going to use that to just bore our holes as best as I can. Like I said, if it's a little bit. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I've got the holes mostly bored. I've checked the fit, it's close. The one hole has, the rear tube socket hole has a little bit of dihedral when you put it on and then when you put just the front one on, it has a little bit of anhedral. Um, so it's actually really close. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to cut the slot here. That way we can clean out the foam that's inside of the, uh, the holes. Now we've got the holes bored, we've got the slot cut, we've got the holes cleaned out. Now we're gonna place the stab here on the stab stub and push the tube through, which there it is. The stab is a little bit low here at the root and it has some dihedral. So if we drill out the uh, the inboard side here, we should be, that should get pretty close to where we need it. I also see that as you hear the, the, the ribs are, or the edges are close to each other. And then as we push the tube in, it actually moves the tip forward and we get a, a pretty sizable gap. So we need to bore on the front side of this out as well. So we need to go up on the top and then forward on the outboard portion. Now we'll do the forward tube. And leave this one. With low on the front. Yes it is, it's low on the front and it actually takes the the leading edge back so it needs to come back at the back towards the outboard portion and up at the leading edge right at the root so okay now it's just gonna be a whole lot of back and forth back and forth back and forth so while I do Next thing I'm going to do once I figure this rib out is I'm going to skin the top of this horizontal stabilizer. That way I have a nice, um, a nice hard edge, a nice consistent edge of the balsa skin to really adjust where it needs to be position wise. So one thing I am going to do that would be helpful is I'm going to put the root rib back on here since I know it's the horizontal stabilizer has already been taken into account and have been trimmed for this rib. So if that rib's not there, it may throw things off just a little bit. So now we can really get an idea of how close we are. And it looks like we are almost bang on. So 
I'm really happy with that. So the next step we're going to do is we need to figure out the rib out here. I've already got blanks of that cut. Let me go grab those. And they're oversized and they're also over length. Because what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of material to go forward and forward and aft. I actually want to adjust this part to fit the tube position to where it's a reasonably good fit between the the weeding gauge and the trailing gauge pieces. And before I go trim it, I'm going to use a incidence meter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this incidence meter here on the stub about parallel with the trailing edge stock which there's about a degree then I'm gonna put it here as well and we've got plenty of room well it's actually bang on and it's right on one degree so we know as long as the the incidence here well the the inclination here and here matches our dihedral would be good okay. we've got our outboard rib blank trimmed now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this stab out just a little bit. I'm going to push this blank inside of the gap. Hopefully it will fit, which it does not seem like it wants to. Yep, yep. It's because we have those rails for the servos on the bottom. So I'm going to go get a permagrit tool so I can sand those back a little bit. Okay, now I've got the rib blank trimmed. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the stab off. We're going to slide this in the slot. And then we're going to take those two sockets. And we're going to put those down inside the hole. Clean out all the, the foam. And then the next one we can do is we can take this root rib and we can do the same thing we can put it over the sockets and then we'll put the whole thing together hopefully it slides easily which it looks like it's going to yep that should work out quite nice if the sockets would stop sliding all the way into the stab it's be one of the benefits of having this all glued together you won't have to worry about this too much board rib in position the end board is pretty dang close take the incidence meter once again and we will adjust see what we've got so I'm looking at now it's saying zero and out here we are showing zero so that horizontal stabilizer is pretty much bang on where it needs to be just a small little gap here in the back at the trailing edge but honestly we can we can account for that we can just a little bit of foam will need to come out here towards the tip to get that to, to slide back forward but while everything is still lined up next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to raise it just a hair next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to trace the outline of this airfoil and if it's a little undersized, that is fine. Uh, you won't, I, I, on when I'm doing stuff like this, I typically like to use the smaller side of the airfoil if it's tapered, just because it gives you just a little bit of a glue gap there at the end. So we're just gonna trace the airfoil here. Then we're gonna take it all back apart and we're gonna trim this piece down to, to shape. And this particular rib will actually be used on the other side as well as a template to get it pretty close to where it needs to be. So I'm gonna go do all that off camera and I will come back when things are a little bit further along.